Yo, K-Face Guy here. What's going on, YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. And today, we're going to finally do the review of the Samsung Premier LSP9T Ultra Short Throw Projector, UST for short. Now, I bought this back this past Thursday, and I've had it uh, really set in, dialed in now, and I really want to talk about it. And I've left some notes in my phone to kind of stay on track. I'm actually going to start off with some of the things that I don't like before I start off with things that I do like, because as a normal consumer, as a normal person in this home theater hobby, the projector world, there are some frustrations that I had that you may have or have had in your own experience. Now, this is my first time ever owning a projector like this. I've never seen one in person. I've never saw one in the showroom. This is the first time I've ever had my hands or eyes on an ultra short throw projector, a laser one at that. So this is a laser ultra short throw projector. This is basically a uh, laser TV is what they call it. So disclaimer, this laser TV gives you off a purplish kind of view. I'm going to try to edit it out in post to make it more natural looking like what I see in person, but laser projectors seem to give this red glow or at least this projector does. So I'll try to edit that out in a uh, post but let's get right into it so i want to start off with some of the things that i didn't like about the projector but let's start off with the setup so when you first unbox your ultra short throw projector you're going to want to figure out what height and what distance you want to set it from that's going to be decided on your screen size so i have a weird screen size at 103 inches and inside samsung's quick start guide they have um suggestions for you based off your screen size 100 105 110 and so on and so forth but it goes by <laughs> increments of five and of course mine being 103 I had to do a little bit of figuring it out but I did at first I didn't have a stand I was actually using my ottoman that happens to be a really close size to what Samsung recommended and it did very very well so that allowed me to figure out what height I needed to be at whether I could buy a stand or if I needed to build my own and luckily I was able to find one that puts me at a pretty close height I do have um, a little bit of something underneath it to kind of give me those extra inches or half inch that I needed and so now I'm sitting pretty so once you get your projector, you want to set it up and figure out the height and the distance to match your screen size. We did that here. Now, some things that was really frustrating is that positioning. You do not want to use keystone correction. We'll get into that later if you're not sure what that is. You don't want to have to alter the picture. You want to try to get your placement right so that you get the best image. Because if you crop into the image, you lose some of your sensor. You use less sensor, meaning you don't get your full 4K resolution. And when you're spending this kind of money, you want your full resolution. And so for me, I uh, will get to that whole part actually. We'll wait to say that for later. But I got my position where I wanted to be, but it was super hard. Now, these projectors have rubber feet, and so when you slide it across its surface, it kind of sticks. You kind of have to give it a little pull, but you may pull it too much or push it in too much because you're trying to get past the friction that the rubber feet cause. So putting it on a piece of wood like this and sliding the wood made those fine intricacies so much easier to get. Those small movements that I needed was so much easier to get when I had something to slide it with. So if you're getting an ultra short projector, I recommend getting some, some sliders, like furniture sliders, and putting them underneath the projector, it's so much easier to slide that way to get it to where you need it to be because uh, I was pulling it too far or pushing it in too far because of the friction I was fighting against, but having it on this piece of wood made it slide so much easier. So those are frustrations that you may be able to avoid. Now, a lot of people want to talk about an, a screen. My screen is a thousand dollar screen from Elite Screens, but it's not an ALR screen, ambient light rejecting. This is Acoustic transparent, but it's not ambient light rejecting. It's not completely white. It's kind of a grayish kind of color, but not it's not a cine gray, but it's not a white screen. It has a little bit of gray to it. I'll try to link it down below in the description box so you guys can see it. Um, I did a video on it as well as a review. This is not ambient light rejecting. And what ambient light rejecting does is it has the fabric or the material is kind of angled so that any light coming from above it is uh, not reflected back towards you. Anything coming underneath it is reflected as normal. So it's perfect for a UST projector. Well, mine's not ambient light rejecting. It's a normal screen that most of us have in our homes. And it does just fine, like absolutely fine. Even in normal daylight, I have a couple windows. I don't close them. I have a couple lamps in here or whatever. I don't close them. I watch this in complete daylight all the time and it is absolutely phenomenal. That's also because this projector is extremely bright, which is a good and a bad thing. We'll get to that in the picture setting. So the ALR screen, I think if you have the opportunity to get one, if you don't have a screen already, go get one because it can only help your situation. It makes it even more usable in the daytime or with some, some kind of lighting if you're not controlled lighting. But you don't have to. A lot of people will tell you, you need an ALR to use a UST. You absolutely do not. You're looking at it right now. I'll turn on a lamp. Alexa, turn on the living room lamp. 
Here we go. We have a lamp on now. It's over there in the okay. corner. Oh, oh Jesus. Alexa, phone. stop. Just to quit it. Golly. So there you go. So there's some light. Of course, normally, like a normal projector, it does get washed out in the blacks, but it is very much a, a, a usable uh, projector in the daytime by far. It's simple and easy to watch. Your best picture will always be in the dark, but it's just fine. So I'm going to turn that light back off. All right, so we got past the screen. Get an LOR if you can, if you don't already have a screen, but your screen will do just fine with this, I promise. The next thing is keystone correction. So I'm gonna go in to the menus here. Let me grab the remote and go to my connection, or excuse me, my, my, my picture mode here. And we're gonna go down to projector settings and then go to screen adjustment. And this will bring you your your kind of your keystone correction. It's actually really good. So you have your basic mode where there's four points. You have one on each corner and you can kind of move these where you want to. I'll show you a demonstration without messing my own connections up. You can move these where you want to and it'll change it. Now, if you want a more pinpoint accurate change, you can hit advanced down here and it adds a lot more points to your grid. So now not just the four corners, but you also have some towards the middle of the screen and really fine tune this to where you want it to be. So you can really move this where you like it, right? And so this is how you're going to fit it to your screen. If you just absolutely can't get it to fit your screen the way it's supposed to by uh, positioning, then the keystone correction is there. Now you, like I said, do not want to have to use the keystone correction because as you crop into that sensor, you use less of it, meaning your 4K image now becomes a little bit less than 4K. Now, will our eyes be able to see it or maybe a blind test if one projector is cropped in and one projector is not, would you be able to tell? Maybe, maybe not. But if you know it in your head that you're losing some 4K picture, you probably don't want to do it. Just the whole thought of it is, is enough for me to not want to do it. So I actually had to use it just ever so slightly. I couldn't get the height correct to get the screen to reach all the way to the top. So I actually had to crop the bottom a little bit and move it up to make it all fit. So I slightly used it and it's so minuscule that you can't tell a difference. But you do not want to have to use the keystone if you don't have to. But my room, my wall is not flat. It has an angle to it a little bit. And so my projector screen doesn't sit flat. Therefore, my projector has a little bit of keystone. But it is what it is. It looks phenomenal as you guys can hopefully tell. Let's move on to menus, the response time. So these are the ties in menus that you see in all the Samsung TVs nowadays. This is very familiar to you guys if you use ties in. I used to have a Samsung TV back in the day. It's very much uh, the same kind of process as far as getting around the menus, even to the settings. It's, it's, it's similar to the TV. Now, this is projector brand new, costs about $6,500. I think it's on sale right now for under $6,000, maybe $5,900 or $5,500. And uh, I expect a lot for that price tag. Now, it seems to be moving fine just now, but there are times whenever this menu lags a lot, and that is absolutely unacceptable. When you have a, a reputable brand like this that's been making technology forever, washers, dryers, refrigerators, TVs, phones, they need to have the best, especially if you're the most expensive projector on the market. And it doesn't happen often. You can see it's pretty responsive. I'm clicking, clicking, clicking. You guys can see the red light on my remote, and you guys can see the uh, screen moving at the same time. It is overall really responsive. Things load up pretty quickly most all the time, but there are times where things really lag or freeze and I have to turn off the projector. And that is absolutely unacceptable for something that costs this much. There is nothing else to say about that. It should never happen until this starts to, get to be a really old technology. And then maybe I can see some slowing down, but right out of the box, it was slow. And then it kind of picked up over time. And it's been fine, honestly, since then, but I should never have that issue. So that's something that I wanted to make sure that I noted for you guys that you can have some lag issues sometimes with this projector. Now, I did see when I put my, my picture settings together and I started turning off some of the processing, there's a lot of processing you can do with the picture. Once I turned a lot of that stuff off, it actually sped up my menus. So it seemed like there's like a, a ROM and RAM cap maybe with this. Maybe uh, that's the issue. But turning off some of those picture settings, which we'll talk about later, actually sped up a lot of the operation system. So that's, I don't know if that's neither here nor there, but that's something that I wanted to note for sure. So the last thing that I wanted to complain about on the Samsung was the, um, what was it? Let me go back to this side. Where's my notes? I want to talk about the brightness of this, of this screen. I'm going to go over here to the side of the room and I'm going to go to my settings and I'm going to go down to picture and then expert settings here. You have a lot of different things you can do to the picture. One of those is if you go down far enough, you guys are going to see 
the um, ST2084. This is the default level of picture in SDR mode. And this dial here goes from, oops, I didn't mean to exit out, let me go back. This dial here changes, it's essentially the brightness control of this screen. Now this gets incredibly bright. I mean, it's um, almost painful to look at. Three is the maximum, I think negative three is the minimum. And uh, it gets so bright. It's not going to reflect too much on my camera because my camera is going to make up for the brightness. But you guys can kind of see it makes a huge difference in brightness. Me personally, I have it at one. I think it's um, even better at negative one or zero. This gets completely bright. It lowers or brightens the entire image, not just your blacks or your whites. The whole image uh, brightens or lowers depending on what input you're on. And so for me, this is really bright to the point where it actually hurts your eyes. I've, there's been times where my eyes have watered and itched because it is a little too bright. Now, it may be just my room because my living room is not that big. Maybe I'm too close for a 103 inch screen and it may be different for you guys. But for me, this got really bright and it doesn't really get much dimmer than this. Even the lowest dim is still really bright. So that may be a problem for you if you're using this in a smaller room like I am. So that's something that I also wanted to note. So now we're going to talk about the good stuff, of course. Now this is what I wanted to talk about was the good things about this Samsung because there's a lot of it. And we're going to start off with the picture quality since we're already in the menus. I'm using Filmmaker mode because Filmmaker mode is probably the most accurate out of the box. Maybe standard mode is pretty good too. But this allows you to get into some of those picture settings that are locked otherwise. If you're in vivid mode or something like that or dynamic, I think they call it in, in this particular projector, it locks you out of some of the, the picture quality modes. But if you go to Filmmaker mode or standard Standard mode you can actually change a lot of different things so I'm in filmmaker mode and what this allows me to do is go to expert settings and pretty much control everything that I want so here are my current settings right now and this has given me a really good picture out of the box this screen has a really strong red color the red part of the laser is very strong which is probably why the room has such a red tint to it when it's on it's very strong so these settings have helped me dial that back it also helped me get my skin tones back skin tones are really good on standard and in filmmaker but not completely accurate true to life and so these settings that I mess with kind of help me get those skin tones back when I'm watching my 4k content and in, in 1080p as well and so my contrast is at 41 and contrast increases how bright your whites are and again this screen overall is really bright but I did find that um, increasing it around 39 to 42 depending on what you like to watch was actually really really good much higher and it becomes unnatural and much lower makes it hard to keep the detail in the skin tones and in some of the other uh, like like flowers or the sky and so 40 41 39 in that area is actually really really good now if we go down to sharpness I have mine on zero and this is the same thing that I do with pictures on televisions you don't want to have too much sharpness because if you crank it up too much you're gonna add like a really bad halo effect around objects it traces the object when around it and that's not what you want so I have mine on zero now you can play around with this maybe get up to three four five or six depending on what you like to watch but I have mine on zero it actually wouldn't be too bad having around two or three to be honest with you depending on what you like to watch and so that's where I have my sharpness. You just want to not have a halo around the screen. Now my color is definitely subjective. I like a little bit more pop. This is probably not as true to nature or as true to life as it could be. I would probably honestly lower it down a little bit to get it more true, maybe around 20 down to 15 in that ballpark. But I like mine a little bit higher. I think it's 20 out of the box. Um, but I boosted mine at about 24 or 25, just to bring a little more livelihood to what I like to watch. A little more pop, a little more pizzazz, but not too much to where things start to turn orange or whatever like that. Um, so I really like it around here. I think more accurate around the 15 to 20 range, so maybe I'll play around with that. Um, but that's kind of where I have mine. I'll leave mine at 20 right now. Now going through my tint, left that at the same. I applied my settings to all picture modes, I mean all inputs, so all my sources have the same picture settings. Picture clarity settings, this is hands, this enhances the sharpness of fast moving objects, like blur motion, blur, whatever. I turn this off. Um, we don't really wanna add any, uh, you, if you turn it on, you can access a, a couple few um, extra settings here, but I have this picture setting off because um, I don't want it to do any extra processing to my picture. I want it to stay natural and true to the director's intent. And so adding any extra detail to it when things are moving, it can be good, maybe like sports, something like that, basketball, fast moving things like football, whatever, hockey, but I don't watch any of that. So I have it off completely. Contrast enhancer too, what that does is brighten up the dark areas, which I didn't like because what it does is kind of take some of the, um, the HDR away. I like to watch HDR content, HDR 10, HDR 10 plus. I watch a lot of that. And so having it on at all, kind of, it boosts the blacks, which is fine, but 
a projector has a hard time showing blacks on a white screen anyway, so I kept that off just to keep that detail between my brightest picture and my lowest picture, if that makes any sense to you guys. Color tone is standard. A lot of people like to go warm one or warm two. I personally found that to be too warm, especially warm two, which is completely unnatural. Warm one's not bad. I had it on that for a while, but I just recently sent it to standard, and standard looks really good. Now, cool is way too blue for me. I don't like it at all, but standard's really, really good in my personal opinion, so I'm there for that. My white balance here, I did a two-point calibration here. I, boot, I I didn't boost, but I took away that red. I told you at the beginning of the video, the red had a really strong uh, presence in the picture quality. So I ended up knocking it down the negative 10. G gain was negative three. B gain, the blue color was down a little bit. When you have it on standard mode on your, uh, your warm colors and everything, you have a lot of blue presence. So I knocked that down. B offset was negative one. So that's kind of what I'm running right now with this. I'll probably play around with it more with more content, but I like it so far. My gamma is set at ST2084-2084. That's what you have when you're in SDR mode, which is what I'm in right now. If you watch 4K Ultra HD, you can have HLG or BT1886, whatever. These unlock depending on what content you're watching or what you have plugged up. So, And then again, this is the brightness level. You can set the brightness of whatever, you, uh, whatever you're watching at that moment. So I have mine at zero or maybe a negative one. Shadow detail, again, brightens the dark areas. I left mine at negative three. I like this because it actually darkens the blacks, deepens the black. So you can see here, if I boost it up, it boosts the whole picture up. So now we're pretty flat when it comes to the brightest brights and the darkest darks. But you can see on the left side of the screen that the left side of the screen is more affected. Those darks um, kind of darken up. You don't want to go all the way to negative five for nothing because you start to lose the detail down here in this street, for example. You can't see the lines anymore, but negative three, you can still see them, but obviously they're meant to be faded. If you boost it up, it loses that fade. You lose some of that detail. And of course it hurts your HDR performance. So I found negative three to be probably one of the best options to have it no higher than negative two or negative one in my personal opinion so that's kind of how i have that there and everything else is pretty much um d done and defaulted so i can reset it and start all over i want to whatever but that's pretty much it for my color settings and this has allowed me to get a really really solid picture um, with all my content. This is just a Fire 4K stick, but I can also watch Netflix and be happy with this. I can watch my Hulu or Disney Plus or Prime Video be happy. YouTube looks good. And then of course, what I care about, my 4K Ultra HD disc that I watch, they look really, really good as well. So I am super happy with that. If I go over to YouTube really quickly, and I'm gonna put on some 4K or maybe a whatever kind of content I can find. Uh, I'll kind of leave this in a background for you guys to see. I'm gonna go ahead and type in 4K, Let's see if it pops up for me, 4K Ultra HD video. Just to give you something to kind of see the picture quality. Let's do, let's do, all right, so there's some 4K content on here just for you guys to be able to see some of the picture quality. Um, it absolutely looks phenomenal. The, the blacks are there. It's very, the blacks on this projector is extremely good. I absolutely love them and you can play with them to make them better or worse, depending on how you calibrate it. But you can retain detail back here, like behind the seahorse here. You can still see that there's some coral back here. There's some red back here. It leaves a lot of the detail there and gives you some really, really deep, really rich blacks for a projector while keeping the brights there too. Especially in this picture, you can see the seahorse's details in towards like, the, I guess the front, the horn, the trunk, whatever you call that, the snout. But it also leaves a lot of the white there too. I love the, the contrast, the HDR performance of this projector. It's probably one of the best on the market, if not the best right now. And so the colors pop very, very well. It looks very natural. Skin tones are good. Details good. N not a lot of judder really. It's not too bad. You can kind of fix it. Um, it's actually a phenomenal picture. I really can't believe the quality of picture that we have in projectors nowadays. So a uh, fantastic projector. While this is showing, I'll say just a few things. The sound quality of this projector is really good too. It has, I think, 40 watt speakers inside. They kind of point upward and outward to give you some kind of surround effect. I don't really get a surround effect at all with the projector, but the volume level of the projector and the, um, the bass actually is really good. I'll put the volume on. This is Max. 
the projector gets plenty loud. I don't know if you guys can hear that with my, my microphone I'm using, but it gets plenty loud, easy to hear. Dialogue comes out really clear and smooth. Absolutely no problem uh, listening to this and watching a movie with the projector itself. It's a really nice substitute if you don't want to turn on your home theater system, um, but I still suggest maybe getting a Samsung soundbar or, or soundbar in general, a home theater to go with it. So the sound on here is really good. Gets plenty loud for even medium-sized rooms, so that's really nice to see. I don't know how it'll sound on a ceiling if you want to ceiling mount this, which you can do. It's probably really, really hard to get it correct, but it's go for it if you want to go for it, but I don't recommend it. It's really hard to do, um, but it does sound good nonetheless, so uh, kudos to them on the 40-watt speakers built into this. It's actually really, really good. All right, guys, I'm going to end this by showing you a little bit of some 4K HDR picture here. This is HDR 10 plus, and this is going to show you the bright, bright, the bright colors with the black contrast. You guys can really get a good idea of how the picture level can really get. It gets very bright and very detailed. So this is some HDR 10 content. Now, my camera, I'm going to change this iOS, the, uh, the ISO mode for you guys really quickly. Probably right there. I had it on auto mode, so we're gonna leave it like this. You guys can see the bright brights and the dark blacks and get a good idea of what the picture actually looks looks like. So I'm gonna end it by saying this is a fantastic projector. Is it worth the money? Potentially. You're, it's, it's the best projector out there, but there's a lot of things that rival it for half the cost. So I don't recommend buying this thing at full $6,500 because there are things in the likes of Hisense and LG that are maybe half the cost that will give you a pretty close picture. But this is the best. So if you want the best and you want a future proof, this may be it. Um, but there are things that cost less that aren't as uh, bad as maybe the price suggests, the price difference suggests. But a uh, fantastic projector, guys. I've it's really in, invigorated me to watch this. I've watched a lot more content in my home theater and been in here a lot more often ever since I've got this projector because it's so much fun to watch and it's uh, so much fun to um, kind of be in here and see the picture quality and watch movies over again. It just kind of brought life back into uh, my home theater, really. And so I'm super happy to have this. I, I paid full retail for it, of course, um, and I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy with it. I've, I've showed my friends and they're uh, ecstatic over it. It's a it's an eye catcher. It looks really good. It looks like a TV because you don't have a giant projector beam behind you beaming light towards your wall. It's more subtle. It has a nice sound system that goes with it. And so I am extremely pleased with the projector. Samsung makes a good product. They always have when it comes to, to TVs and stuff like that. So no different in this projector. So if you're looking at this projector versus other brands, I think the LG comes really close to this. If some people may like the LG better, honestly, I think I like this one better than the LG. I can't remember the model number, but I'll try to put it in the description. The Hisense comes really close to it too. I'll put that in the description box. There are some rivals out there that are really good, but for me personally, I think this is absolutely the best that you can get right now for the money. I hope that they come down on price tab because that's stopping a lot of people from buying it but i think this is one of the best ones out there so the video is ending on youtube so i'll end my video here as well thank you guys so much for watching hit that like button subscribe if you're not already and we will see you guys in the next video okay peace guy out peace you can say i lost my mind i will keep on holding my head high even if the sky is falling down